see me. Oh, if you ever do catch sight of my form, would you mind telling me how I appear? I've always wondered if I hold a specific form, even in this incorporeal manifestation. Yes. Why would I not be serious when bringing up my grievances? I know the matter of what plays on the television might seem of a minor consequence to you, but to me it very much is one of the sole dictators as to whether I will be emotionally fulfilled for the day. I can't ask you all the time to tune into what I want to watch. So on days where I can't reach out and your TV is tuned to some droll nonsense, I find myself only able to find solace in my own thoughts, which I will say is a generally unpleasant place to be stuck in. It is not enjoyable confronting the slow decay of one's own ego, and I would much prefer to tune into something that may distract me from the realities of my current predicament. With all due respect, my dear roommate, I do understand that it is in fact your TV, and that you may do what you will with your property. On the other hand, I think you aren't quite understanding the severity of the situation I find myself in. Do not forget that long before you signed a lease, I have inhabited this place. And while that information was not disclosed, it does not alter the facts. And as the matter stands, this place very much is mine as well. If anything, I would argue that my spiritual bond to this place supersedes whatever legal or economic claim you may make. With one missed payment, you could be easily whisked away from my domain, while I, on the other hand, but it's leave no matter how dearly I wish to move on. So if I must stake my claim to this prison, I would at the very least like said a claim to be honored by you, my non-materially challenged friend. <sighs> Once more, I would like to remind you that earlier, I stated I simply wish to be considered in the itinerary. I am not asking you to completely uproot your own schedule to accommodate mine. I am simply stating that as roommates, we should try to find a schedule that would fulfill both our needs. You need a break from your work. I need a break from my dawning existential dread. I think our goals are quite aligned in this regard. So please, 
Consider my pleas with an empathetic ear. You know, my dear, dear roommate, I think you are misjudging your position within our dynamic. I am not a helpless lost soul that cannot act out of her own behalf. Here, perhaps you need a helpful reminder. dramatic enough to get my point across. I certainly do not enjoy my presence being ignored. Nobody likes to be ignored. Whether they have a perceivable presence or not. I mean, you communicate with others on that device of yours. You give them attention without their physical presence. Only when they appear in voices and words. Is this not true? Our communication might be less frequent, but I am still very much here, and it is quite rude to ignore company, no matter the form it takes. Please, do not tense up so. I was simply trying to prove a point. While I am able to scare you, I have no intention or desire to hurt you. I am simply trying to exert what little power I have to get you to pay attention to my needs and desires. Such as anyone would lash out when being ignored. I'm sorry if I have rattled you, but my ability to stand up for myself, you must understand it exists in quite a diminished capacity. I mean, I'm not going to apologize for frightening you exactly. You were ignored 
bring my needs and priorities. I feel like I've simply reacted in a manner befitting how you sought to treat me. I opened up this matter as equals, roommates. However, I would not let those around me ignore me in death as they did in life. Yes, ignored. I believe this is an experience we share in common. Have I not told you the circumstances that led me to this sorry state? I was sure I wailed about it once upon a time. But perhaps that was with another tenant. Time gets away from me far too often in this temporal malaise. Would it benefit you to hear my tale? That is, if I had not uttered these words to you on a previous occasion. Well, while I would like to spin for you a tragic tale for the ages, a yarn dripping with passion, conspiracy, betrayal, and in romance. My story is that of a tragically mundane variety. I had been living in this apartment for a few years, finding solace here after my college days unceremoniously dropped me into the working world with nary a contact or direction to move in. I, much like yourself, worked a nondescript nine to five of such mediocrity that its very nature was one of the first things to drift away from my fragmenting memories. I had lived in such a state, when shared by the majority of people, I would argue, until one day I could feel myself slowing down. I was always an introverted individual, keeping much to myself and Admittedly, finding social connections frustrating to obtain and retain. Without a support network to confide in, I let myself trudge on in silence, ignoring signs of my impending mortality in favor of pushing myself further and further into whatever rat race my past self deemed so crucial to our survival. The irony here is that it killed me. I imagine it was either stress or some underlying issue. I had simply neglected to notice. But one day, while cooking a poultry meal for myself in that very kitchen over yonder, I felt a sharp pain in my chest. I forgot the exact catalyst. I believe I had just gotten off the phone and was lost in thought once more when that searing sensation dug its talons into me. I leaned up against the kitchen counter, panting, figuring it was simply a panic attack that would subside in time. It was too late when I realized that things were anything but normal. I tried 
to stabilize myself, shamble over to my landline, but by the time I had made it to the threshold of the living room, it was too little too late. I collapsed to the ground, and in grasping my heart, I felt the final desperate beat of my organic shell ring out as my consciousness fled into the world around me. I can still remember it, staring up at that amber light bulb, that light engulfing the world around me as I melted it into the wood caressing my numbed spine. My nerves reached out, seeking connections in the air, where initially no response would be found. But eventually something stuck, a static cling, washing over every inch of my convulsing form. And at some point during this eternity of agony, what was once myself had ceased to be. I wondered at that moment, why I left such a silly expression. How humorous. That that would be my first thought. I think at the time, it felt so dreamlike I didn't even consider the gravity of the situation. When I eventually got over the initial shock, I then wondered where the light I was supposed to wander towards could be found. Foolishly, I tried drifting into the amber orb that had been my companion in my final moments. However, that obviously went nowhere. I'm unsure where to even begin. I started to explore the limits of my new existence. Quickly realizing that this domain, which was my sanctuary in life, had become my prison in death. After that, it was a matter of why. I was not familiar with tales of the occult when I still drew breath, at least not actively. I was familiar enough to understand that hauntings occurred when certain business was left unfulfilled. Still, I was not murdered, nor was I abused. Seemingly, my only gripe was with my meat, which simply failed to hold my spirit together. And then it dawned on me, the time, the clock. All rotations, once gone by, then twice, then thrice, more and more and more. And still my body lies there, still at first. Then writhing with the fetid life that flocks to that which decays. I saw maggots begin to writhe under my once pristine flesh. 
Grass nibble at my frozen limbs. Roaches scurry across the inanimate lump that once constituted my person. I imagine it was only once a complaint about the smell had been filed that someone finally attempted to knock on my door. And only later still, that my landlady opened said door to uncover the horrors of nature that lurked behind. And that's exactly it. Through living a life of unremarkability, I had found myself in a state where my decaying form was almost left to rot away in peace. Sequestered away from the world I once called my home. Forever unremarked, unmourned, and unloved. That should be all of that morbid tale for now. I assure you, I have much more pleasant stories to share. Should the condition for a continued dialogue present itself once more. But still, I told you this somber story to get a point across. That in life, I was ignored to such a degree that my passing came and went with nary a concern from any other soul. And I do believe that if I have any regret about my past life, it's that I did not make myself known to those around me. So I must ask that you now respect my wishes. For while my ability to present myself in a non-threatening manner is limited, I would very much appreciate that my presence be taken into account while I still remain, for lack of a better term, a tenant here. Do you understand? I was not familiar with tales of the occult when I still drew breath. I see. Thank you for being amicable and understanding. I feel... very seen. Thank you again for listening to my woes. Now, to the matter at hand. Hmm? Of course. I would be happy to answer a question of yours, while our world still managed to maintain correspondence. Please, ask away. And I will answer your query to the best of my ability. Why do I feel trapped? That's an odd thing to ask, dear. I would imagine that that would be an obvious enough answer. My spirit is found, and not necessarily this space but the emptiness that is found in between. I am trapped in this liminal limbo that permeates the apartment, with no clear direction as to where to go from here. How could one get any more stuck? I am free. Dear, you will need to clarify what you wish to imply with that statement. From where I... 
float, I guess. Or exist might be a better term. I feel anything but free. Take it from someone on the other side. 
Never take your life for granted. The fact that you are here now. The fact that you are here at all. Is a miracle of happenstance. And it would be such a shame for feelings of self-doubt. To deprive the world of such a miracle. I apologize. I believe I lost the thread there. You must understand that as of late, my mind has been getting away from me. But I hope that my words may offer some comfort rather than fright. I'm very happy to hear that. My dearest roommate. Now, since we are on more equal footing in regards to our living situation, would you mind if I made a suggestion? I would very much like to watch more dramas. So during the times when you are at work, would you be willing to leave on a new show from now until we are able to communicate once more? That way, I will not be interrupting your daily ritual of consuming, let's be frank, garbage media. And when we do find the ability to communicate once more, I may tell you which series I wish to continue watching. And who knows? Maybe along the way we could discover something we would both like to watch. I would quite enjoy a TV date with you. If such a thing is in the cards, that is. Given the state I'm in. Wait, you would be interested in that? Does that... Dare I say, does that include the date part? I'll admit that that was perhaps poor word choice on my part, but... That's... That's a yes. That's... Dear roommate, I'm not quite sure how to take that. I'm not just seeing things where there's nothing, correct? Yes, yes. You are right. You are simply stating you would try. Such an event might be a logistical and metaphysical impossibility anyways, but... Thank you. I am eager to get to connect with you more. I know I have not been the easiest roommate to have, but I appreciate you taking the effort to reach out to me. Now... Perhaps all you need is to get an Ouija board, and we can have daily conversations. <laughs> I say that in jest, of course. Though, maybe it wouldn't be the worst idea to try. Speaking via radio waves seems to come a lot more naturally than moving physical objects. But I would be willing to exist any avenue of conversation if it makes retaining contact all the easier. So yes, please try looking into that as well. And in the meantime... Who is this? 
it seems I'm starting to lose control here again. I shouldn't have freaked out on such an immature manner before. I'm sorry if my previous rashness has caused our rendezvous to be cut short. I know I will not be audible for much longer. I have no idea when we will next chat. So, let me say it's been a pleasure talking to you as always. Try not to hold so much pain and worry on your person. And remember to take time for yourself. I enjoy your company immensely. But not enough to wish you occupied the same void I inhabit. Goodbye, my dear roommate. I Thank you so much for watching. I would like to give a special shout out to my patrons, including Big Red Fire, Blue, Brandon Meza, Claxor, Logan Serna, Rowan Hawthorpe, Shrumple, Snake Clone, and Tianova. Thank you so much for your continued support, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care.